Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how I cut fabric and felt on my scan and cut machine. Now, I more or less always use an iron-on stabiliser on the back of all fabric and felt. And I usually use the one that you can see here, Heat and Bond Ultra. This is actually meant to be a no-sew stabiliser which means you can basically just iron it onto your fabric, cut out your shape either using your scan and cut machine or by hand, peel the backing off, iron it onto your project and it's supposed to be stable, but I always sew through it. Now, Heat and Bond do do a light version, which is the sewable version, which I haven't got and I've never tried, but that will have to be for a future project. So I always use the Ultra and irrespective of whether it says or not, it's stable just with ironing, I sew through it and have not had any problems with any of the sewing machines that I've used this product on. Then recently I found some Bonder web in a drawer that I've had for ages and there was a small amount in it so I tried cutting fabric with this and this cut just as well as the Heat and Bond Ultra. So I'm going to show you today using both products, the Heat and Bond Ultra and the Bonder Web. And I'm going to cut a piece of cotton fabric and a piece of felt. So I'm just going to set up my mat and then I'll come back. Okay, so I've ironed the Heat and Bond onto the back of both of these bits of fabric. So this is cotton quilting fabric and on the back you can see I've got the heat and bond ironed on with a dry hot iron and the paper's still in place at the moment. This one you might not be able to see as good because it's white felt so this is ordinary white felt that I bought in packets of various colours from my haberdashery but I have used other felt and I've bought it from craft shops or market stalls this is quite soft felt and again I've ironed heat and bond onto the back and you can see the paper backing still on then I've got the same two pieces of fabric here's another piece but this time I've got the bonder web on the back and I as I said to you earlier it was an old packet so I've not got much left so I've had to patch this one up this is in two bits but you can see the paper is still on and here's the felt again can see the paper back in there and again this is in two parts so I don't know what kind of result we're going to get with this because I'm going to try and keep my any design I use away from these joins so what I'm going to do now I'm going to peel the paper backing off all four of the pieces of felt and fabric and I'm going to put them onto my regular mat with the sticky side down so I'm going to peel this paper off and the fabric side is going to be uppermost so I'll come back to you in a minute when I've done that okay so I've got the fabric on my mat I've got the heat and bond fabric at the top and the bonder web, bonder web fabric at the bottom and I don't know if you're going to be able to see on the camera but this is the heat and bond side with the paper removed down onto my mat and this is the bonder web side um, this is the bonder web fabric sorry you can see some little little bits of it there it's very very thin the bonder web and that's bonder web side down to the mat and one thing that you need to do is take the end of your spatula and you near you really need to rub this down quite firmly so that you're removing all the air bubbles from the fabric so that the blade doesn't catch on anything when it's cutting and as I said earlier this is my regular mat it's got no extra sticky um, fabric extra tack or anything on it it's just my regular mat the very first mat I've had the very first blade in my machine um, from new I got my machine in March and I'm still on the same mat and the same blade I did re-sticky this mat with um, zig repositionable glue and I did a blog posting about that I think that was about the 25th of March 
Um, I think I got my machine at the beginning of March and by about the 25th I had to clean and restick him a mat and there's a blog posting on my blog about that and there's a link to my blog in the description box below or there's also a link on the YouTube my YouTube header channel header so I have restickered it but you can see it's not massively sticky um, so just to recap I've ironed heat and bond onto the back of this one and remove the paper and put it down and have ironed bonder web onto the back of this one remove the paper and put it down and I'm going to load it into the machine Okay, I'm not quite sure how good you're going to see the screen here, but I'm trying to keep the camera on the fabric and the blade really. So I'm going to go into my patterns. I'm going to go into this second section. I'm going to choose a flower. I'm going to go for this one, A015. I'm going to size it down to about one and a half inches in height. because I want to cut a mat for this afterwards in felt, so I want to try and see if I can get it fairly precise. So 1.50 in height, I'm going to say OK, OK again, I'm going to ask for three, and I'm going to click Set, and I've got three there. In fact, I need to go back and add three more. Now I've got too many. So we'll delete some. So I've got six now. Okay, now I'm going to do a background scan. As I say, I don't know how clear you can see this. It's really more for the cutting of the fabric, but I'm going to do a background scan and say, okay because I want to line up the three flowers on the bonder web fabric and the three flowers on the vibe, on the heat and bond fabric. Okay, so I'm just going to move three of the flowers down onto the bonder web fabric. I'm just going to go into my settings and change the background so I can see them a bit better. And I'll see if I can get a little bit nearer so you can see the screen. Okay, so the three flowers at the top are on the heat and bond fabric and the three at the bottom are on the bonder web. So if you just bear with me a minute. And I'm now going to set my blade to four. And this is my regular blade. And I'm going to go into the settings on the machine, which is the little wrench icon. And I'm going to scroll down to the second page and put my cut pressure on four. My speed is always on five and I'm going to say OK. And now we're going to say cut. And hopefully you should cut. Thank you. 
okay. I don't know if you can how well you can see this. Try and move back a little bit. I'm going to remove the top one, which was the heat and bond. Can you see that? And I'm going to remove the bottom one, which is the bonder web. And this was the one that was in two sections. So we'll see how we managed to cut with this because there was a bit of a join. Okay, so this one's just caught. Don't know if you can see it there, just one tiny little thread catching it. But there are the others, all cut perfectly. As I say, this one that's caught is more likely to be my fault. I probably either didn't rub the fabric down properly. The join, I think, was somewhere in the middle-ish. I'm not quite sure. But it, it is it has cut. It's just a tiny little thread it's, it's um, caught on. But these... If you can see these and you can see how pliable they are, this is the bonder web. Now you can still iron this onto your fabrics and then you can sew over it. And these are the heat and bond. I'll show you the heat and bond. The heat and bond has more of a glossy shine on the back and it does make your fabric a little bit firmer don't know if you if it comes over this is the heat and bond and this is the bond web this is a bit more pliable this is but this is definitely stiffer so i hope that helps there now what i'm going to do i'm going to set up the same process the same mat and everything i'm going to do it with felt so i'll be back in a few minutes okay i've got the felt loaded onto my mat now again i've got the heat and bond felt on the top and the bond web felt on the bottom <clears throat> excuse me now for felt you need to change your settings so we're still on the regular mat we've got the heat and bond and the bonder web side down to the mat like we had before so this is the felt side that's up now cutting felt's a bit like flying by the seat of your pants you've just got to go for it it does seem a bit scary because you're probably using settings that you've never used before but anyway here we go so you turn your blade i'm on the regular blade you turn your blade up to seven Put your blade back in the machine and then you go into your settings. I'm going to try and get a little bit nearer so you can see. Go into your settings, scroll down one and you want to go to pressure and put it on nine. I'll try and get a little bit nearer so you can see. Okay, so sorry, can you see that? Cut speed's always on five, cut pressure on nine, and you've got your blade on seven. Okay, I'm just going to go back into the, I'm going to go, go to the home button. I'm going to go back to my patterns. Try and get a little bit nearer for you to see. I'm going to go into the flower, I'm going to choose the flower, it was that one, number 15. I'm going to say OK, it was, it's on 1.50 in height from last time, I'm going to say OK and OK. And then, it's some terrible light here today, I don't know if you can, how good you can see this or not. Try and move it around, there you go, is that better? We're going to click on this icon, this is the like seam allowance icon. That's taken up the, the height to 1.73. So hopefully, if I cut these in felt now, they should layer up on my flowers that I cut before. I'm going to ask for six because we want to try and cut three from each piece of felt. Say set. I'm going to do the background scan again. I'm only doing this because I'm cutting from two different types of backing and I want to be able to see where to position them. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this very good or not because the light's terrible. But basically I've got six flowers. I'm going to drag three onto the bottom section. I'm not sure whether they'll all fit, but we'll try it. And I've got three on my bonder web. 
uh, sorry on my heat and bond one at the top so I'm going to say <clears throat> OK and cut. that's finished and I'm going to unload my mat <clears throat> and at this point I would say I've only used Bonder web once before and that was on cotton and um, I did do a blog posting about it I've never used it on felt so I don't know what results we're going to get but we'll see so I'm going to peel away the heat and bond felt and I'm going to peel away the Bonder web felt Actually, it's cut it really well. So I'll try and move back a little bit so you can see. So the top three are the heat and bond. I'll just get them all up to show you. Sorry if this is at a funny angle, but I'm trying to work and film at the same time, which isn't easy being as though I'm not a professional. So I'll just come back a little bit. So the top three are the heat and bond. And if I turn them over, you'll see they've got that glossy high gloss, which is the heat and bond. And the bottom three are the bonder web. And they virtually look as though there's nothing on the back of them. So that's cut really well. So that's quite a good experiment. And then if I come to my flowers and get my flowers from before, hopefully these would layer up and I can use them on a project. So I hope you found that helpful. Please like, share and subscribe and leave me any questions or comments below. Thank you.